Hi, I wanted to provide an update on the little ultralight chase cam I've been working on. Uh, here's the current version of it. It's a little different than it was before. Um, previously the camera was mounted right on the neck of the bottle there. I've added this uh, crossbar to which is attached a, a harness, if you will. Um, it uh, tends to stabilize the thing in, in the yaw axis as that's attached to the drag line. The center drag line doesn't even, it's just not under tension right now. It's just a safety harness in case the other one broke. Um, the other change is the camera hangs down now about a foot. Um, having the weight of that camera below the, uh, the drogue unit um, stabilizes it in pitch and roll. Um, the camera is just attached to a piece of quarter inch uh, threaded rod uh, with a little uh, ball joint there that allows you to focus the camera. This is the same uh, you know, shuttlecock thing that I made before out of a Coke bottle. Um, stuck in the neck of it is a half inch PVC that gives you a good place to attach the crossbar and the, the camera mount. Uh, this is a big improvement on what it was before and one of the surprising things is now that the camera will tuck up underneath the wing in the slipstream and it stabilizes itself by touching the top of the wing by the, with the little zip ties and produces a pretty uh, smooth video with the thing uh, not dragging behind the airplane but actually attached to it. So we'll put some videos up here that shows you the results of the flight test. Here's the camera tucked up under the wing um, and this I've tried mounting the camera in different places on the airframe and I always get this vibration uh, which causes things to look like jello and, and you can see a little bit of that in the wing strut at the top right but it's not too bad. In fact, this is as, as good as I've been able to get with about a half a dozen different attempts at trying to mount the camera on the airplane. I'm going to come around here in a 360 and lose some altitude and go fly low along that little pond. This is a, a ranch nearby that uh, the owner's a pilot and uh, we go over here often and go fly over to the place and look at the wildlife and the cattle and he doesn't mind having some airplanes around. So we're coming down across the pond here. There's a lot of wildlife this time of year. There's just water everywhere, so a lot of water birds migrate up and down the, the West Coast Flyway. Uh, but this, you see how, how smooth the video is. It's, uh, it's really pretty usable stuff. Um, I'm going to uh, show you now, like I say the camera is now cinched up against the wing with probably about six or eight inches of uh, monofilament line holding it off the carabiner and those little zip ties just holding it off the fabric and the, the slipstream is, is holding it in place. If I was to slow down it would drop. I'm going to pull up here and then uh, use the drill motor to uh, release the camera extending the line backwards and you can see I like that effect of the airplane kind of pulling away. Uh, but when the camera hits the end of the line here when I stop it you see that bobbing up and down that's one of the things I'm, I'm going to work on. I, I think by uh, adding a third line on that on that harness uh, which connects to the camera down low I can help to minimize that that bobbing up and down uh, here I, I let it out a little more and you see every time it stops and starts you get that uh, that up and down motion it's not too bad in, in flight but it, it's uh, it's less stable in that axis than it is in the pitch and the roll axis right now uh, we're gonna go make a low pass on this other little pond that's off to the left there with the camera extended um, but I pulled it in just a little bit because it's hard to know where that camera is below the airplane and when you're flying low I don't want to be looking around behind me you've got to be focused on what you're doing so I, I pull it in a little closer just so I don't drag the thing on the ground but with these these wide-angle lenses and these action cams everything is closer than it appears so um, when you see the grass at the far edge of this pond uh, I, I imagine the camera was three or four feet off the ground at, at that point. Um, when we come across here, there's a small little flock of ducks that uh, scatters up and got a nice view of them there. And then uh, coming in on that grass, it looks pretty low. So we'll pull up here and then I'm going to head off uh, further to the east is the um, Sacramento River. Um, there's a nice uh, tree line over there that I like to fly. There's some big open fields uh, along the trees, so you can fly low uh, above the trees and have an uh, emergency landing field right nearby. Um, I like the way this camera looks, uh, or the way the video looks when the airplane crosses over the sun. You get some nice flares and wing, uh, a light on the bottom of the wing and things. It makes an interesting video. So this is the tree line I talked about here, and uh, we're coming up on it. I'm going to make a left turn and fly down low along the tree line. One thing I noticed, the camera seems fairly smooth 
uh, in the air. As I get closer to the ground, I'm not sure if it's the ground effect uh, affecting the downwash off the wing. Um, there wasn't much wind this day, so I, I don't think it was turbulence below the trees, but things tend to get a little bumpier. I'm going to post this video. The previous one I, I posted on YouTube, I used the stabilization feature that YouTube offers. And this one I'm going to post uh, without that, so you can see the raw video. Um, the most part's not too bad. This flight along the hedgerow is pretty wobbly. There's a lot of roll going on, which uh, I, I'm still not sure why. It's, just, it's curious to me why the camera is reacting differently at low altitudes. But it does seem to be a, a, a consistent feature. I flew low along the runway and saw the same thing. So we're going to pull up here again to the left um, and then uh, make a couple of more passes uh, uh, across the sun uh, just to get some beauty shots. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll pull the camera back up underneath the wing so you can see how that works. It's a variable speed drill. So on this retrieve, I, I, I did it fairly slowly, which I, I kind of like that effect better. Um, I'm going to make some more marks on my, on my deployment line so I can kind of get a sense of where the camera is. I have one, one mark right now that places the camera six feet behind the tail. And that's where most of this video is shot from. Um, there's some interesting angles as you get closer into the airplane that would probably be fun to have um, a mark to show where the camera might be at these different angles. I was interested in the flutter on the underside of the wing there from the vibration. I hadn't noticed that before when I've been flying, but it shows up really clear in this picture. So there's the camera stowed back under the uh, strut there. You see it stabilize itself as it touches the bottom surface of the wing. You still get a nice view. You get the air, a little bit of the airplane in there. Here's some other video I shot with the camera aimed more towards the pilot. And at this point, it's not tucked up under the wing. It's hanging low up ne down next to the runway. Uh, we're just going to do a takeoff and a landing here showing this, this different view. You can see the shadow of the thing there as it's hanging down. One thing I like about this setup is you do have the opportunity to uh, aim the camera differently and kind of get some different viewpoints. Uh, Sometimes you're choosing a helmet cam, it gets kind of boring. Everything kind of looks the same after a while. And I, this is an interesting view. You get to see the pilot a little better. You still get the sense of, of flight, um, but you get a little more detail of you know what's going on there. So I'd probably be playing with this a little more too. So there was the takeoff, and then we'll <coughs> let the camera out. There's this. Uh, appears like the airplane is zooming away. Actually, it's the camera retreating. And then we're going to come back around here to the landing. So we'll pull the camera back in to the point that's uh, it's flying just behind and below the wing here. Um, just a little bit above the ground. You can see we're not seeing the bottom of the fuselage there. So it's probably about the height of the axle on the tire. It, it, isn't, it isn't much above the ground. Had to do a couple of S turns here. Came in a little high, so I kind of made for some more interesting video. Get get some S turns in on final here to lose some altitude. And then you'll see at the very end when I uh, come down, the, the, the camera streams back in the slipstream, and as the slipstream starts to dissipate, as the sl plane slows down, and the camera starts to hang straight down, it got a little too close to the runway, so I had to hit the drill and just pull it in just a little bit. But I did get to see the, the wheels touch the pavement here, which is kind of interesting. And the uh, unfortunately, the frame rate doesn't allow you to see them spinning accurately. Anyway, this is looking good. I'm, I'm happy with what I've done so far. There's a few more things to do, and I'll keep you posted. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching, and stay tuned.